They cover on average two-thirds of the Earth's surface, but scientists still understand precious little about clouds. Some believe they hold the key to unlocking the mysteries of climate change. Recently, an unprecedented study was launched to explore them. It all took place as far east as you can go in the Caribbean islands, the most ideal place to do it. And we were invited along for an up-close look. It's the dead of night on the Caribbean island of Barbados. But for the crew of NOAA's Orion P-3 aircraft, we'll set the, engines and, uh, go and go. the day is just getting started. This hurricane hunter usually flies into monster storms to learn how they grow. Let's go ahead and turn and start climbing. On this night, we watched as the team dropped remote sensors, almost 60 of them over eight hours. I'm going to be hearing that sound of my sleep. To gather scientific data about a subject that only becomes visible with the rising sun. So where we want to be is just below cloud base. Looks like there's some cells lining up. The white puffy cumulus clouds this tropical region is famous for may be the crucial missing puzzle piece for anyone trying to predict the rate of climate change. If we don't understand clouds, can we ever be accurate in climate modeling? No, we can't because they're a huge part of the climate system. It actually is coming out. Chris Farrell is NOAA's lead investigator for an unprecedented six-week-long field science exercise called Atomic. This is like the biggest large-scale open-air cloud laboratory on the Atlantic. You're as far east as you're going to get here, which is yeah. why Barbados is, is yeah. the spot to do this. That's right, a sweet spot for doing this kind of work. You're flooding the atmosphere with just about everything I can think of. I mean, it's, it's, it's drones. Two, one. We brought out you know, a fleet of ships and aircraft and balloons and everything we could think of. That's the idea, is just to try to get as many different data points. Right. Clouds may live in the air, but they're created by conditions far below, on and beneath the surface of the ocean. So to fully understand them, you need a ship. How you doing? Hi, I'm Jeff. Nice to meet you. Noah has one. The Ron Brown, a state-of-the-art floating science platform. This is a heavily instrumented surfboard. Um, Dr. Elizabeth Thompson runs the science program on board. It's a surfboard that's taking these incredibly complicated measurements. I don't think a human would enjoy surfing on it, but the instruments do a really fine job. The issue with tropical clouds is they're really shallow, so it's really difficult for our satellites to get all of the properties of those small little clouds right. Instead of relying on satellites, Thompson and her team unleashed dozens of remote vehicles across hundreds of square miles of ocean for six full weeks. Most of the heat in the global climate system is at the equator, where the sun beats down is the most strong on the ocean surface, and all that heat gets, has to get dissipated somewhere. Clouds are like air conditioning systems. Clouds are trying to redistribute energy. The global models that are tasked with predicting sea level rise in Florida, how hurricane strength will change in 100 years, all of that is kind of determined on how well we can predict weather in the tropics. The tropics affects everything else. Yeah, the rate at which the Earth warms is really dependent on how these clouds work, and that's why we're here. My team has instruments for measuring temperature, humidity, wind. But Thompson is not alone here. The project is multinational involving British, French, and German scientists. So it's our most sophisticated instrument. We including Bjorn Stevens, who has been studying clouds from the Barbados Cloud Observatory for more than a decade. These sort of clouds are very interesting because they regulate Earth's energy budget quite a lot. So if you change these type of clouds a little bit, it influences the climate. And so as the climate warms, the real question is what happens to these sorts of clouds. Because if you fill it too full, it bursts too soon, right? Yeah. And if you fill it Stevens too hopes the data collected here will help climate scientists narrow down the wide range of predictions about how much the planet will warm and how fast. Okay, I'll, I'll go launch it now, huh? Okay. Yeah. Some have forecast a worst-case scenario where these clouds and the protection from sunlight they provide disappear completely as we pump more CO2 into the atmosphere. And that'll lead to more sunlight at the surface, which will enhance or increase the pace of warming. Um, but the models treat these things pretty crudely. We're here to see if we can figure out what's right. Oh, here we go. I think we're already in the cloud there. You see clouds every day, and you don't think at what a massive role they play. Yeah, that's right. I, I'm like a 
guy that builds radars and flies on airplanes and tries to understand one cloud at a time. I'm just like one of the guys out there pushing that my little rock up the hill. You get giddy when you're talking about clouds. Yeah, I'm Mr. Cloud around here. All of it means Barbados, typically known as a destination for sun seekers. One, two, three. Is quickly gaining fame as a place for cloud hunters, too. Mr. Mr. Cloud may sound yeah, like, like a, a villain maybe in a comic book, but, but he's a hero in the, uh, in the scientific community right now. It's pretty amazing some of the work they're doing down there. As they say, what happens in the tropics doesn't stay in the tropics. I know they said the clouds are the air conditioning system for all of us. Mm -hmm. Was there any big takeaway that they do know already right now? They're still compiling all of this data. It's going to take years to put it all together. I wouldn't necessarily expect a eureka moment, right, yeah. um, but it's these incremental advances they make as we understand a little bit more about climate and about what's happening every single day. Yeah, but just looking at the long game and, and, and fearing what may happen with the disappearance of our clouds, it kind of puts coronavirus into perspective, doesn't it? I mean, you, this is an immediate danger right now, but this is the long term. Long -term. Folks Ever need to present. be as concerned about things like this, too.